Okay, hi everyone. I'm here with your 413 lesson. It is how can I describe any figure using variable to generalize. Your introduction says, now it is time to use some algebra. When you understand patterns and extend your thinking to make claims that apply to any figure, you are using a thought process called generalizing. Generalizing is one of the most important parts of algebraic thinking. In this lesson, you and your team will work together to generalize using the methods you developed in lesson 412 to describe the number of tiles in a square frame of any size. So we're going to start with 424. <clears throat> so 424 says refer to your lesson 412B resource page. Choose a different method from lesson 412 for counting that number of tiles in the square frame. Work with your team to shorten this method into an algebraic expression, a combination of numbers, variables, and operation symbols. Be prepared to share your ideas with the class. So if you did not write on the resource page, what you're going to do is you're going to need to get your 412 notes out and where it goes through those six names. Um, like Raymond and all those, you're going to want to look at those. You are looking at those methods that those students chose and you are trying to shorten one of them um, into an algebraic expression. So for example, let's talk about, let's talk about um, Jonas. Jonas said, if there were, if each side was 10, there were four sides he needed to subtract four. So now what we want to do is we want to write this as an algebraic expression. So if we do not know the side lengths, we are going to replace 10 with X. We know still that there are four sides. So we would have four X X represents the number of tiles on the side length because we don't know how big our figure is. And then you would want to subtract the four um, overlapping tiles. Okay, I know this is a very tricky concept. Okay, it's just start algebra, I understand that. I would like you to try writing um, someone else's method. Let's do TJ's. I would like you to write an algebraic expression for TJ. So go ahead and pause and write that expression now. Okay, if you're back with me, then you have written your algebraic expression for TJ. We're gonna save that and go over it in class. Moving on to 425. 425 says, compare the two expressions you created in problems 423 and 424. Okay, so we skipped 423, so I will give you the expression in 423. The expressions both represent a number of tiles in a square frame of any side length, so they are called equivalent expressions. For example, there are 36 tiles in a 10 by 10 frame, no matter how you count them. For both expressions to work, you should get the right number of tiles for any particular frame. How can we check that your two expressions are equivalent? So the expression from problem 423 is 2x plus 2 x minus times quantity x minus 2. And your expression from 424 was 4x minus 4. So how can you check that these two expressions are equivalent? Go ahead and answer that. Okay, if you are back with me, you've answered part A, and we're going to talk about the how they're equivalent in class. Looking down here. Jared was playing around and created the following expressions for fun. Are they equivalent? How can you tell? So take a minute, look at these three expressions, and tell me if they are equivalent or not. Okay, if you're back with me, you have done this problem. We're going to look at it. So we have 2x plus 2. We have x plus 1 plus x plus 1. And then 2 times the quantity of x plus 1. So if we look at this, we have 2x plus 2. That's the most simplified. Here, we can simplify it more by doing something called combining like terms. 
So you have to ask yourself, how many X's do I have? Well, I have two X's. How many ones do I have? Plus two. Which is now the same as this expression. Here we have to do something called the distributed property. So you multiply whatever's on the outside to everything on the inside. So two times X is two X and two times one is two. So now all of our expressions are written in the same form. They are all two X plus two, which means that they are equivalent. Okay. Moving on to C. Are the two expressions below equivalent? Five plus X times X times X and three X plus five. So go ahead and pause your video and try. Okay, this one's a little more tricky. You need to just substitute values in for X to see if they're equivalent. So for example, if I wanted to make my X is ones, I would have five plus one times one times one and three times one plus five. Five, one times one times one is one. So five plus one is six. Three times one is three plus five that would be eight. Therefore, these are not equivalent. Okay, moving on to 426. Bonnie is the owner of I've Been Framed Picture Framing Shop. She's excited about the work you have done describing square frames in the previous problems and now wants your help. Use your algebraic expressions to help Bonnie with each of the following orders. Be prepared to explain how you found each answer. A customer wants a frame that is eight tiles along each side. How many tiles would Bonnie need for the whole frame? Go ahead and pause your video and answer part A. Okay, this is something that we're gonna to save to talk about in class. Part B says, Bonnie's neighbor wants a frame that is 16 tiles along each side. How many tiles will she need? Go ahead and pause your video and answer part B. Okay, if you're back with me, that means you've answered part B. Again, that's something we're gonna to save to talk about in class. Part C says, a new customer comes into Bonnie's shop and says he wants a frame that is 25 tiles on each side. He used the expression four times the quantity of X minus one to calculate that he needed 99 tiles. Bonnie explains that he actually only needs 96 tiles. What mistake did the customer make? So go ahead and answer part C. If you're back with me, you answered part C, and again, we're going to save it. Part D says, Bonnie's father has 32 tiles that he wants to use to frame an old photograph. He needs to know the dimensions of the frame so that he can have the photo printed at the correct size. What should Bonnie tell him? Go ahead and pause the video and answer part D. We'll talk about that in class. In part E, Bonnie has a set of 40 tiles that she bought while traveling to South Africa. What is the largest frame size on each side that she can make with these tiles? Well, she used all of her tiles. Go ahead and pause the video and answer part E. Okay, if you're back with me, you answer part E. We're going to move down to 427. 427 says, Bonnie has recently remodeled her I've Been Framed picture framing shop and can now make larger frames. She has just received an order for a square frame that has 102 tiles along each side. How many tiles will she need to make this frame? Explain how you got your answer. So go ahead and pause the video and answer this. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. You needed to use one of the methods that um, from the other framing questions to answer this question. So if there were four sides 
102 tiles total minus one for each corner. Now we can solve this. Four times 101, because 102 minus one is 101, would give us 404. Therefore, she will need 404 tiles for the frame. Moving on to 428. Um, actually, we're skipping 428. We're going to move down to 429. 429, how can you use algebraic expressions for a frame pattern to find any number of tiles you need to make any size of frame? The variable, which generally represents any number, changes to be a specific number when you know the side length. So you can replace the variable with that number and simplify the expression. This process is called evaluating the expression for a specific value. It can be done with any algebraic expression. For example, if you know that x equals 2 in the expression 3x plus 5, you can calculate the value of the expression by replacing the x with the number 2, writing 3 times 2 plus 5 equals 11. Gerald created some more algebraic expressions for fun. Evaluate his expressions for the given value of the variable. So we're going to do part A together. So we have 2x plus 6 for x equals 3. So when you see an x, you're going to substitute in 3 for x. So we have 2 times 3 plus 6. Then you ask yourself order of operations, so multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. So Gerald's answer for that expression would be 12. I would like you to finish the video. Oops, sorry. Finish the video by answering Gerald questions 429 parts B, C, and D, and we are going to save those and talk about them in class. If you have any questions, as always, please make sure you email me.